ever really I never really knew that I was a good person. Like I always just tried. Like I'm trying to. Be a good person. My mom was always a single parent. There was no male figure in my household ever. So it was just me and my mom, always. I don't want my son to go through things that I went through without my father. Didn't feel loved. Didn't know if a uh, father's supposed to call out the man in his son. I, nobody ever did that to me. I feel like I'm doing the right things. But I still don't know if that if that makes me a good person. So I'm one of 14, number six to be exact. And for a long time, we didn't have a table that was big enough for all of us to sit at um, because there were so many of us. Growing up in a big family, food was a big deal. I didn't know it yet, but it, it really was kind of the pinnacle for um, everything that we did. It revolved in the kitchen. It was very common to have, I don't know, 30, 50 people over at our house at one time. People knew about the Hamiltons in a good way, and I'm really proud of that. Um, and so, I think that in terms of me meeting Derek, we went to high school together and he was just a really nice guy. Like, I mean, super cute, like totally caught my eye the first time I saw him. Like, oh, who's this guy? Me and her weren't dating because I didn't think that I had a chance with her. And, and she said that I'm going to college and you're going to college, so we cannot be together. But in my head, I was like, I'm gonna marry her. I wanna marry her. Like, this is my wife. I don't know the first thing about being a husband, you know, came from a single parent household. The husbands that I do know aren't very good men. Um, I don't know what that means, but whatever it takes, like, I'm, I'm gonna be her husband. Uh, she left, you know, we kept in contact and I joined the military. I joined the military because I didn't know what I was gonna do. I didn't wanna become a drug dealer. I had no chance of becoming an athlete. And I was the worst freestyle out of all of my cousins, so it wasn't an option. So I was like, "Hey, you know, if I asked, what would you say?" And she was like, "Are you like, are you are you asking?" And I was like, "I'm not asking. I'm just saying, like, you know, I know you're in college or whatever, but at this time, she didn't know that I had already received orders to go to Iraq." And uh, so I'm thinking about these things like, you know, there's a possibility I may die, you know, and, uh, you know, there are some things that I don't want to wait for. And I bought a ring that the following weekend and then I proposed. Fast forward, we ended up getting married at a very young age and he just continued to pursue me.
this off. After we got married, I was gone like five, six months later. And she came from a big family. And when people that come from a, you know, that type of environment, when they transition somewhere else, it could be that it could be hard to, to start over because you're you're used to being around, you know, family, community. It was kind of like this broken experience of like, you know, like you're wanting to share these like first time exciting moments with your spouse or your loved one or, you know, whoever they are. But it's a challenge because there's always this um, elephant in the room, which is called the military. Fast forward, like this is 2000. I go to Iraq. I go to Afghanistan for nine months, come back a year in some change and then I get sent to Korea for a year. And while I'm in Korea, I decide that you know, I want to do more. Like I, my job was great, but I wanted to do more. Uh, I was considering getting out, but I didn't. And at this time I'm studying to become a, a bomb technician. Uh, the guys who run towards bombs, when people call to tell you that there's a bomb, like that's, and she was like, I'm pregnant. And every, you know, there's a, ch everybody knows there's a, a higher chance that you're gonna die in this job. Um, just because that's just the nature of this job, let alone in the military. Um, we uh, we get to Florida, and that this is where Paige gets a little bit more involved with the military. And this is where we realize, man, like we could really do this because the community of people there. We didn't have a truck, and I remember some we we had gotten a lot of baby presents from the baby shower, and one of the guys from my job was like, "Here, take my truck," and I was like, "I gotta go to Georgia, like." And, you know, it's, I won't be back for like four days. And he was like, Man, I don't care. Like, give me keys to your car. You take my truck. His truck was way nicer than my car. Um, and I was like, OK. And Paige was like, who does that? But those were the people, the guys that I was, you know, that I was surrounded by. You know, in the military, it's like community happens really fast. You don't have to have 10, 20 things in common with someone to just like be in community with them. It's like, your husband's deployed? Oh, mine is too. Let's get our kids together and like go at, like and have dinner at each other's house every Friday night. And so in the military community, there's this, you know, phrase called like your battle buddy, um, like spouse. So like if your husband's deployed, um, you kind of get paired with another spouse. And, <clears throat> and it's really great if you have kids that are the same age, but just to know like, you know, you know, like you get what's what's going on. And if it's been a week and there's a blackout and you haven't heard from your husband, I haven't heard from my husband. We're trying like low key, high key not to freak out, but we're both freaking out, you know, but it's like let's order pizza. You know, I've gone through that several times. And even if like, you know, other spouses that I just knew, whether it was through church, I mean, and I just knew like man, you're struggling right now and you don't have a battle buddy, I'm gonna be your battle buddy. Come over to my house every Tuesday for dinner, you know? When I decided I was gonna go special forces, it was like, okay, um, it's even tighter. And it was one of the reasons why I did it because, you know, these are people that you're gonna spend the rest of your career with. And because of the intensity of the job, 
people are a lot closer. So these people that I would train with, I would spend the rest, if I decide to stay in the military, we're gonna spend the rest of our career together. So they'll be lifetime friends. military uh they say like i don't know the exact wording but they they tell soldiers like you know that that they the military is your first priority it doesn't matter about your family like they they try to say family first but that's a lie like your family is never first it's the military first and then everything else comes second You know, Derek missed a lot of things because of the military. So um, whether it was like getting our first house or, um, you know, anniversaries or birthdays or um, when we had kids, you know, birthdays for kids, first steps for kids, first words for kids. Yeah. It gets really hard after a long time. One year I was gone 245 days out of the year um, from my house, meaning I was I slept in a hotel bed. And um, and that was, con you know, it's considered normal. And despite the problems that you have going on with your family, we expect you to swallow that and deal with, you know, the bigger issue at hand, and that's the, the interest of the United States government. But I remember like, I'm basically a single mom. Like I have to, I have to make decisions and I have to do things because you're not here. So I have to do this. And he, he was really hurt by, you know, me saying it and not because it was like, I was trying to, you know, stick it to him, but because it was, it was true. So during that time, it just, as my kids started to get older, um, it just became a very apparent that I was an absent father. You know, th that, that's the part that people never tell you about, is like every time a soldier goes um, overseas, every time he leaves for three months, every time he leaves for, you know, six months, 10 months, he's different and you're different. And so you have to rebuild every single time. The underlying issue hasn't changed. The underlying issue is your employment. Like your employment, you have an issue with these things because you are in this environment. You know, you're struggling with communication because you're always gone. And then when you come home, you're only dealing with issues. Like there is really no time for you to connect and grow. I wanted Derek to choose me. I always wanted him to choose me. But I also realized that if I made him choose me, that that could cause resentment, you know, because of how much um, success he'd had you know, with his career in the military. And so there was a part of me that just kind of like died to that that was like man like i know that you love me like i'm not doubting that you love me but i also like just don't want to make this you have to choose you know like do i choose continuing to progress in my career and it looking like this or you know do i choose do i choose you the military is a hard person to beat They do. Enough is enough. I can't keep leaving. I can't keep, you know, putting all of this on you um, because this is too much. 
And I said, yes, this is too much <laughs> because it was, I mean, it really was too much. It was like, no, no, this is happening because if it doesn't happen, we may not make it, you know, <laughs> like that's, that's where I think we had to get to in order to really um, push through. He turned down some things and that was tough because we didn't really know what we were gonna do next. We just knew that we were gonna get out. For a number of reasons, I feel like I was going to abandon my community. You know, the people that we had established these relationships with. I just needed the freedom to be able to you know, just make better, make better choices. And I had a year left and I had to be making money. I've always had a paycheck ever since I was 15. And, um, and I just learned that early on, you, you don't leave another job before you have another job. You know, they need to overlap. So, I knew that it was like, hey, well, I don't have a choice. I have mortgages and car notes and tuitions. Like, uh, this isn't an option. We got to make money. Derek, he was traveling a lot and probably in the best shape of his life. And he was having some complications with his health. I just always felt like something was going on in my stomach. It was a weird feeling. It wasn't enough to like, you know, maybe go to the emergency room, but it was something I knew was wrong. Like it just, my stomach just felt off. That then just kind of took us down the rabbit hole of looking at our food and like what was in our food. During that time, I just felt disgusted and disappointed with the food system. I was like, dude, this is, I don't even know why I took it so personal, but I was really upset because of the countries that I had been a part of. Traveling in Afghanistan, Iraq, these third world uh, countries, as well as, you know, Colombia, the fancy parts of Colombia, and then the ghettos, the slums, and the favelas of South America, you know, there's no person between them and their food. Like, there's no middle person. And so maybe we're the ones, like, maybe I'm not very privileged. Um, and when did I say that that was okay for the government to decide what type of food is okay to give me. 
So we started supporting local farms and we realized like, okay, if we're gonna, you know, really care about our food, we should care about the people who are growing it. And that led us into um, just shopping at farmers markets, visiting farms, and then purchasing in bulk. The guy that we were getting chicken from ran at chicken and Derek was like, really upset really upset about it and he then says oh, I'm just gonna grow it myself and I looked at him like he was crazy and he was serious though he was like no no I'm gonna grow it myself and I was like oh, okay whatever and then he orders the chickens sends me the message that he ordered the chickens and I'm pregnant at this time like at this point like I'm five minutes and I'm like okay so wait you ordered chickens are they gonna come like after the baby and the chickens needed a sound shelter. So I was like, I have to get this done. Two, it took me two days to build it. I get it finished and it's maybe like, it's like 11 o'clock at night. Oh, Paige said that, she said it after I built it. She was like, man, like, you know, you worked really hard on that. And I remember being like, what? Like, I've worked harder? Oh, that's right. You don't ever get to see me work hard. You don't see me work. When I work, I'm working uh, in another country. My, my coworkers see me work. You know, my, my friends see me work, but my family never get to see me work. They never really get to see me work after something I'm passionate about. So we raised these chickens in the backyard and I'm thinking, you know, Derek's just doing this to see if he likes raising chicken. Like, I don't know. Um, but I should have known better because with Derek, there's always a bigger play. And so we raise these chickens and then he starts doing numbers and he's like, okay, this could be a business. Like this could be the way out. That's all it took. I, di I didn't need a fancy, oh, I mean, I did say we needed a business plan. We did a business plan. I mean, clearly have business. But yeah, like for us, this was, you know, this was the thing. So we've like put our all into it because this was, we were not going back to the military. Like it's just not an, not an option. You know, I was like, this is it. We're gonna do it. And in order for us to do this, we need to expand our chicken operation. That's what we need to do. We need to start farming right now. Paige is like, she had worked for a couple of different brands doing marketing, like develop, like all this stuff. Like, so she knew how to build a brand. She came up with the logo, her, her sister designed the logo. At the time I was like, oh, Paige, I don't care about that. We're gonna call it Jackson Family Farm, right? And she was like, no, this is a brand. You gotta put it, it needs to be a brand name, right? And she came with Grass Grays. The question that people always say is, first of all, why don't you wanna be a farmer? They go out of business. They don't make money. Like, why would you want to do that? Why do family farms go out of business? Why is there a decline in family farms? Why, why are there no black people farming? You don't know a African-American livestock farmer. I couldn't find one. So we started the business and we acquired an existing business so that we could have customers and to also just kind of catapult us in terms of like what we were doing and having a foothold. You know, we sold all, out of all of our inventory in uh, two weeks. Everything, it was $22,000 worth of inventory. We sold through it in two weeks. We were out of inventory. So it was like, okay, well, we gotta grow even further. So Paige was like, let's go ahead and move. We moved close to the farm. This is tobacco land, so a lot of the pastures are, they were either hayed or they were tobacco. So it, it, the grass wasn't very good. Now I'm looking at, I'm reading about the differences in grasses and the difference in a grass and a lagoon. When we came up with the name Grass Graze, we, we didn't know anything about grass, but we knew <laughs> from a marketing standpoint, it made sense. We have this connection with grass because all of our animals eat grass. Grass is our livelihood.
the... I got a stick that I thought it is. Let's go. I think we can take 14, 14. 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, so... You were going fast? Cover your mouth. I fell off the last time. I got him still fine. Oh, it's fall off the dog. Yeah, so you guys are so pretty. I just... Oh, man. Don't believe in it. It's like... 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 If you know where your food comes from and you're feeding your kids, like you can just naturally live a healthier life. If you're surrounding yourself with people that just have strong and clean and natural values, you start growing in that. The food that the Jacksons produce is amazing. Everything from the smell, the taste, the look of what they have on their farm, you can tell it's a whole different level than what you get at a grocery store. And it was so important to me as I'm raising my two kids to definitely surround ourselves with people that can help you re-educate yourself, right? On how to just live a healthier life. And so I was so drawn to Paige just so I could literally seep all her energy of like, hey, you're a mom of five, right? You're a farmer. You literally like chose the two hardest things you could do, put them together and survive. One of the things that my mom always did is like these huge dinners. It took years, but she finally got a table that was big enough for all of us to sit at. And like, she cried the first time, like we were all able to sit at the table. Um, but that is just something that's always been burned in my brain of just that um, sharing a meal together is just a huge part of community. And so whenever we um, started farming, I realized like, man, some of the best food is like here at our table. And you know, we'd have friends come visit and they're always like, oh, where should we go eat? And I'm like, my house. And they would like, um, they would laugh. And I'm like, no, like really, you should just go to my house. Cause I, you know, I, I know where everything has been raised and how it was, you know, grown or where it's grown. And I think that a lot of people don't know who their farmers are in their local community. And so the farmer's table, the goal is to bridge that gap. Like the goal is to um, allow the community to have a deeper connection um, with their food and with the people around them. I remember being at a farmer's market and telling um, some other farmers like, hey, I wanna do this thing. And they're like, that sounds cool, but I don't think anyone's gonna wanna come. And I was like, no, no, I think people will come to this. Like, I think people will love to come to this because people are dying for a community. And our family was dying for a community. When I tell you they humble me, they really do. Because um, when you talk about just uh, having a mission and a statement when it comes to family and community, they really embody it from not only what they produce for their families, but what they produce for their community. It's the type of thing where if their family won't consume it, then they won't supply it. We know that what we're doing is making a difference, not just for our lives, but for others' lives. I think community is, is everything. I think it's what we need um, so much more.
believe that in order for us to grow as a uh, farming community is for the producers to be at the same table with the eaters, right? They need to be at the same table, right? Typically what happens, you go to a restaurant and you see the chef. If you go to a restaurant where the chef is available, right? They talk about the chef. You go to the grocery store, you don't see anybody. You just see food. There's no pictures of a, a farmer on the on the on uh on anything in a grocery store. Why? Because they don't want you to have a connection to the farmer, right? But as farmers, we need to be connected with the people that are consuming our food so they can hold us responsible, right? So that they can be responsible consumers. That way, there is no oh I didn't know that that's what I was eating. No, no, I'm a better farmer because our my family members tell me hey you know. You know, they keep me accountable. We keep each other accountable. You need to go move that cow. You need to go do this, right? We keep ourselves accountable. And to be better farmers, we have to uh, build that connection with our eaters and our consumers. For a lot of years, um, the military defined Eric. Like it was like, this was the, this is what defines me. You know, like I'm a soldier and that's what I'm a soldier. And now, you know, I think that um, he's proving that he's so much more than that. And I've always known that he's more than that. And, but now it's like, our kids get to see that. Um, I mean, everyone gets to see that. And so with Derek being home, I feel like we're starting over for the first time. As in, everyone is getting used to seeing Derek and, and being with Derek and experiencing Derek in a way that we've never done before. That's a military thing. You put some people in a bad situation, in a bad environment, and whoever comes out of it together, those people have a bond that's tighter than any other thing that exists. And um, I'd say we're, we're more whole now, or maybe like we're working towards being whole again because for a long time, we weren't. It's like starting all over again. Hi guys. Hello. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for joining me. It's nice to see you in person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, so I just wanted to remind everyone if you have any questions, chat. Um, Derek and Paige can see them and we'll answer those. Um, but I wanted to say happy Thanksgiving and uh, hope you had a great day yesterday. Yeah, we did. It was a full day with family and friends. Great. Good, good. I, I have to ask, what was your favorite? After looking at all that food, what was your favorite thing you ate yesterday? 
Oh, uh, probably <laughs> the uh, the turkey. Okay. I like the ham. That was yeah. my favorite. Okay. Well, how do you prepare your turkey? So the we did a deep fry and then we did a uh, uh, we smoked the turkey. It and was then, very crispy. Yeah. It, it would look not appealing, but it was delicious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good. Well, that that's awesome. And the ham. Anything you, did you do special with the ham? I just cured it and we smoked it, so mm -hmm. it was good. Yeah, nothing right. special. Nothing, nothing crazy. Yep. Mm -hmm. but really good, good food. Yeah, yeah it was. Really yeah. Good. good. Um, well, I have some questions for you, and you know, thank you for joining me. I I just love this episode. It just it. Um, there's just so many layers to it. And, um, you know, as a mom with a husband who travels a lot, I just, I, I really could relate to that um, yeah. quite a bit. And um, so what was the biggest surprise for you, Derek, as you transitioned out of the military um, into farming? Like, was there something you just weren't expecting or what was um, just unexpected that happened for you? uh well so when i left yeah so when i left the military i was also obviously transitioning into a new career um so to be honest what was unexpected was uh the, the covid pandemic because that <laughs> happened the it 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 literally like we have been planning you know leaving uh transitioning for you know two years and the year that we you know we plan to transition this happened literally yeah. months after our first like we were months into our plan and wow. uh and it happened so uh so that was unexpected but it was good because you know people welcome uh farmers like there was open arms for new farmers so i was surprised yeah. at that yeah i actually had no idea that was the timeline we were talking about here that was that yeah that would be really unexpected yeah uh-huh yeah uh, yeah gosh um we do have a question here let me see if i can show it mm -hmm. oh i'm sorry yeah yeah oh i'm sorry all right i was waiting i was waiting yeah i saw it uh so what was my um military occupational specialty is what mos stands for and i was a uh uh, Special Operations Civil Affairs, and uh, what that means is I um, I did uh, specialize in uh, in the human domain, so specifically with people. Um, so their special forces is the the stuff that you see on TV. Um, I was the guy that specialized in 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 people, so in uh, community and. Um, in the political environments, uh, specifically tailored to the people. Um, so that's what I did. I represented the United States uh, government as well as uh, the Homeland, um, the um, Department of Homeland Security uh, in other countries. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Perfect. I'm going to show uh, Paige, we have another question for you. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, what was the transition like for me? So the transition into uh, farming or leaving the military, I think I both maybe both. I can I can speak yeah. Um yeah, so the transition into farming was uh, it was really different. Like I I don't I feel like there's not even a certain <laughs> group of words I can use to just it was way different. I I did not grow up on a farm. I um there were a lot of learning curves. I mean, just like telling the kids to make sure they don't leave the like gate open so the pigs can't get out. Like I remember being like, I, why am I saying this? Like this is, this, is, this is never anything that I would have ever said in my life. Like rock, but no, I'm saying pigs. Like don't let the pigs out. This is wild. Um, but I mean, you know, I think it's it's been good. It's been. Um, it's been a learning lesson every day. Um, and the transition of working together has probably been, I would say a greater transition, uh, than just like, go, you know, moving to a farm, <laughs> like that's been big, but yeah, <laughs> this has been bigger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's great. So it sounds like you both did not have any background in farming or agriculture, oh, right? No, no, not at all. Okay. 
So you just yeah. jumped right on in, bought chickens unexpectedly and figured it yeah. out. Okay. So yeah. what like resources did you use or like, yeah, because it's really overwhelming, right? When you're just uh-huh. beginning and oh, you're yeah. like, I've never even owned anything, anything other than like a hamster. And now I have chickens coming to my house. So what, what did you do or where did you turn or who helped with all of this? <laughs> yeah. So, um, Hmm. I did a lot of reading. Uh, I, I read everything that was agriculture related. Um, as far as like, I didn't, um, I, I read about things, specific things. So I read about, you know, pasture poultry. I read about pasture pigs and I read about grass fed. I didn't like get an agriculture book and just start reading, you know, cover to cover. No, I knew specifically what we needed. And then that's what I focused on. So I tried to find experts that were like, there were expert in these things. And then I just, if they had material or if they had spoken about, I would read their um, notes or uh, biographies and stuff like that. And then I, that was, that was pretty much my source. Believe it or not, um, Justin, um, Justin, I started watching the uh, Justin Rhodes show. I don't know, even know if that's what it was called back then. Yes. Yeah. But I was watching <laughs> it and that was the thing. Like I had seen, I actually used that video as to one. It was one of the two videos I watched to learn how to process chickens. So, um, so yeah, ju- the Justin Rose show was one of the oh, shows that I was watching that I was just like, this stuff, people are doing this stuff that I'm talking yeah. about. So I'm not crazy. So <laughs> I knew I wasn't crazy. Yeah. I remember him being like, look, look at this family. Yeah. They've got kids and they're doing it. And yes. I would be like, who are these people? And, <laughs> and it was like, that kind of became like TV. It was like, oh, well, uh-huh. like, this is cool, you know, like you're living a life in yeah. home setting. This is awesome. Yeah, the information's out there. You just have to yeah, know where to look for it. Find it. Yep. There. Yep. I, I was interested in trying to do some like more formal like education. I actually looked at a couple of like the universities local locally and I was like, I don't at first I went on a tour and they the stuff that they were talking about, I was like, this this like these people like you're not gonna learn how to farm like this. Yeah. This is good some of the people are like wait a minute you have a farm with pasture pigs and i was like yeah and they're like they're outside and i was like yeah they're like how do you keep them how do you keep them like how do you control them i was like well you don't control pigs that's not the way this works Uh, (laughs) but yeah that's when i realized that yeah i just need to learn from people that have been doing it for you know 15 20 years yeah absolutely um so what animals were you most timid about uh pigs yeah pigs. yeah the pigs the pigs were they made my stomach hurt for a long time um like we were talking about it but and it now was they're like, his favorite yeah the they are. are the favorite yeah but, yeah i remember someone saying like when you get pigs you're a real farmer mm-hmm. and i was like yeah, Just like you yeah. no one cares about chickens <laughs> they're like oh you're raising chickens that's everybody does that that's yeah it. Pigs, yeah, yeah they're uh, definitely different. timid about the pigs perfect um yeah. So I know you said you acquired an existing home or a, an existing farm. So it already had uh, customers. Mm-hmm. Um, can you talk more about that or or any advice you would have for somebody who's looking to do the same? Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say um, it's definitely it's worth it. It's definitely worth considering. I, I mean, right now, if if you're considering, I would totally if you're considering starting a farm, I would totally try to get with somebody who's older or somebody's looking to retire and then just tell them, Hey, I want to do this. I'm just going to come and I'm just going to work for you for free. I'm actually going to come and work for you. It's not, you want to sell, I'm going to come work for free and then just try to do it that way. Uh, just because, uh, buying existing or acquiring an, an existing farm, um, from a, from a business standpoint, it automatically gives you cash flow. Yeah. Um, so you have an existing customer, you're not trying to, you're not trying to, you know, you, you already have an established market, which is, um, I would say is one of the top things when it's, when you're considering starting a farm, if you don't have a market, I would say, you know, you're just, just, just homestead and raise stuff for yourself. Cause you're not selling anything. Uh, and just, so don't quit your job, continue to do that. But if you plan on doing it full time, acquire a farm, um, because they're going to already have the customers that you don't have to convince that you're paying the you know the right price for a product um you have some somewhat of loyal loyalty and then you get you know animals uh you get uh, equipment and things that it takes years to acquire um believe it or not the bulk feeders 
um, that you need for like, you know, feeding a large group of pigs, those things are really hard to come by unless you want to spend like thousands of dollars on them new, um, trying to get used ones. It's always like luck of draw, like if you make friends and then have your friends look for you. Cause that's how I got mine. It was like, Hey, somebody has this thing. I know you want it. Go get it. Like before yeah. someone else find out about it, but yeah, yeah you're tapping like, into your community there. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Good, good. And Paige, you said, you said you had a background in marketing or a background in business already. So I imagine that. Yeah, absolutely. I think that that definitely helps. Um, but even in that, I mean, there's so many resources, you know, online in terms of trying to learn about like how to market yourself. But I do believe that that's a big part of it. I think a lot of times people want to farm because it's fun, but then if you're trying to farm for a business, like you got to make money. So, you know, you have to kind of think of, of put your business hat on and think like, you know, strategy development and like, how are you going to market yourself and present yourself and, you know, all of those things. Absolutely. And I think that leads into um, the next question. You know, what about everyday tours, burnout? How do you overcome it? Yes. Uh, so um, any burnout is real. So, I mean, completely. It, it, um, so burnout. Is it any burnout to the everyday chore? No, 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 no burnout to the everyday chores. Um, and I say no burnout. Um, because, and, and, I, and I say burnout specifically because in the terms of like, for me, there I can't speak for Paige, but for me, as far as like burnout, because it's something that I really do, um, I don't really consider it work. So it's hard for, I, like, I don't get burnt out at going to the gym because I like to go to the gym. It's my thing. So it's only, I'm only going to do as much as my body or whatever, I, because it's my thing. Farming is my thing. So I don't get burnt out on doing everyday chores. Like, I just don't because when I, I there's sometimes I don't want to go out because it's raining and it's cold or whatever maybe or it's a uh, hundred degrees and you know ninety percent uh, hum, humid. But as far as like burnout to the point where I just I don't want to do the chores, no, it never happens. But I do get salty um, is my word for it. Uh, I do get salty about things sometimes. Not the farm. It's mostly with the the industry um, as a whole. Um, as a whole, yeah. um, I get I do get irritated with that. Um, and the way that I overcome it is by, you know, understanding that I can't change how the industry is as a whole, but I can change what uh, what we're doing. You know, the people, our community, um, and how we are uh, operating our farm. Absolutely. Um, all right, we have another question here. So any uh, words there for men struggling to try something new? Yeah, yeah. Any words for men? Yes. Uh, yes. I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm reading it again. Just to, cool. Um, I would say that if it's a, um, after I found, I had already planned to leave the military for a number of reasons. Uh, primarily it was because I just felt like I was, I felt like I need to be home more. Like I was, it was something missing. Like there's this, this part of me that wants to establish new things. I want to build things with my family, like physically, like I really do want to build things with my hand, but I never had time to do it because I'm, you know, I'm actually getting burnt out in my job um, and with the struggles of just life. Um, and then I discovered farming and and it doesn't even have to be it wasn't even uh, we weren't making money from it it was just the little thing of of uh, those chickens what those chickens provided for me was a couple of things that that is which has led to me not being burnt out i established <laughs> with raising this meat on my own raising these chickens is caring for life even though i have four kids and i haven't cared for them you know that that's as a parent but raising these chickens it was like a different type of it was just different um and my family saw it my family was involved we were doing it at our house it was it altered our lifestyle meaning we we couldn't we couldn't just you know freely just get up and just go out of town and just do like we really did and some people are like well i don't really want to do that but it, it it makes you 
it makes you tailor your life to something that's important to you and that's feeding yourself we didn't have access to food uh we couldn't afford the food that was in a grocery store and it wasn't good anyway it was just marketing um so by doing this we were saying we're gonna surrender we're gonna we're gonna step away from the Monday, you know, the 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 busy schedule. Let's sync our calendars and make sure that we're at all the practices and doing all these things. Um, so uh, just to get to it, follow that desire, um, and and follow that desire because there's a desire, and I felt it for at least 14, 15 years. Like I had told Paige, I was like, I just feel like I'm supposed to be doing something with my hands more. Like I just I didn't know how to explain it. Um, but I would say it doesn't go away. There are people that contact me, they're 80 years old and they're like, I wish I had a done, I wish I had a just started and I would have, I would have done something, but I never even started. Um, but it doesn't have, you You don't have to feed the community. You can feed yourself and it doesn't mean that you have to keep doing it. But after starting, it just, it changed everything. Everything that I thought wasn't possible, you know, yeah, I can pay my bills. Like we pay our bills. Uh, we survive. My kids don't go without. Uh, so follow that desire to build if if you're led to and i believe all men have that desire in them to build something or to raise something absolutely so how did your kids adjust uh, adjust the transition of you being home more and what's their part on the farm yeah i think that um at first it was a little strange because it was you know we were used to Derek being gone a lot and so for him to be home, it was like this, oh, this is your job. You are here. We see you all the time. So if Derek had to go somewhere like, I don't know, pick up pigs or something or go to the, pro you know, something that required like more time, like then that then became kind of strange. And, you know, I, I feel like I pinpoint a lot of this with our youngest because she's um, three and this is the only thing that she's ever known and you know and for my other kids like i feel like they kind of had these like pieces and experiences of like Derek we gone but you know to the it's it's not the same at all and i think it's great because they're young enough to where you know the times where they're being more impacted it's like Derek is here and he's present um so yeah they're proud of the farm i mean they they have chores that they have to do um we want them to be responsible and just kind of see the big picture that like if some things don't get done like then they, you we know, don't have them don't have them yeah. so yeah. And um, please keep the gate shut from that pig exactly <laughs> exactly mm -hmm. so it's a, it's a family effort <laughs> perfect so we have another question here um what is one animal or infrastructure um do you want to have on your homestead that you don't have yet sheep yeah sheep yeah. Yeah, we're one sheep. Yep. Perfect. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, another question here. Um, let's see. Yes. So yes. it was. Uh, yeah. So Derek had gut health issues. Mm -hmm. um, I know we just talked about something with gut, like he had gut issues. And yeah, absolutely. The way that we uh, eat now, like I would say definitely made an impact mm -hmm. that you can, you can answer that. Oh yeah. Um, on your stuff. Oh yeah, for sure. I, I, um, I'm trying to remember. I used to go to the, I, so I haven't gone to the doctor, um, but once since we started farming wow. and, um, but we also, and, and, and not because I, I haven't gone because I haven't real I haven't had any issues to have to go before I had to go and I had to get checked every six months. It was just a part of my job. Uh, from a physical standpoint, they just wanted to make sure. But from those, um, from those six every those reviews, like every like I needed to go because I was like, this still doesn't make sense. Like, why am I still having these stomach issues? It doesn't physically, it doesn't make sense. The numbers don't add up. But yeah, from a um, health standpoint, stomach wise, like I don't I don't have any issues. Today was the first day that I had um, I woke up with uh, congestion. And it's my fault because I drank some milk that I bought from the grocery store. Um, and it's the first time that I have drank a glass of milk that wasn't from one of our cows, uh, which is a A2A2 uh, jerseys, uh, which is a difference. And this morning, this morning I woke up and I was like, 
this is why like i why do i feel like this my uh, just full of it was just it was nasty and then it was because of the milk that i drank um, it just like reaffirms your decision on what you're yeah. doing yeah it was like well maybe we won't milk this winter and now it's like yeah we are we're we're milking through the winter <laughs> this is yeah. happening we have to yeah absolutely another question here what was harder in the beginning the production or the marketing that's a good question um i'm gonna let her answer and then <laughs> i i can tell you from i'll tell you it was production it was but i don't know i don't I always pages she always says i under I underplay it but without it it really did like without marketing we wouldn't have we wouldn't have made it like we wouldn't have because small without to, to actually uh sell on a commercial level if you don't have marketing like your marketing has to be on it and when we say marketing we were talking about like having a story using social media using like everything that you have the ability to do and not like actually billboard type of stuff because you can't afford that as a farmer um so you have to be very creative so um i'm saying production was harder because it was the one thing that we couldn't control oh yeah no, I so, agree with that. so yeah so yeah i would say in some ways um i felt like we marketed too strong because oh, yeah. we had a lot of like demand for like products and people were like well, i want to do wholesale accounts and i'm like do you not realize that we are a small operation <laughs> like yeah. but it just i guess it because of the way that we were marketing and maybe just because people really love the story and we were putting our story out there, um, people would contact us and be like, I want to buy a thousand eggs every like month or something. And we're like, what? Like, yeah. I don't, I mean, like dozen, like, and we're like, we, we are a small farm. <laughs> like, yeah. we're, we're not really there yet. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, I guess that, that's a really good question because in a lot of ways, in order to ramp up production to meet that demand, it requires a lot of infrastructure, infrastructure mm -hmm. that takes years to develop. Yeah. Um, and I don't think that I really understood how to tailor that, like, because I was like, I just know how to market. Like, I, just, I that's what I know how to do. Um, so, yeah, it's tricky. Yeah, that's great. So what's what's next for you all i mean are you are you able to meet those demands soon or or what's on the horizon yeah <laughs> uh, yeah so uh, um yeah so so we won't be able to meet those demands we, we're not going to be able to sell a thousand dozen uh we're not not yet um we're going to take uh we're, we're yeah we're going to shift um and we're going to focus on a specific product, uh, um, value added products. And should we just, yeah, now is the time. Yeah. So we are going to be, uh, releasing some snacks, um, for that are pasture raised, non GMO, uh, like the, the, like gluten healthy gluten free, <laughs> like, because we have like, we have a gluten intolerance in the house and, and we, we, we've had a lot of, so we had a lot of customers asking us for, um, like specific products. So for example, our buying club, which is like made up of a certain amount of uh, families in those, in that, in those, uh, in that group of individuals, a lot of people had like, in like allergies and, you know, like they, they would tell us, well, I haven't been able to eat. We have people that were like, well, I don't eat meat anymore because it makes me, you know, it makes me break out or whatever. We're like, what? Like you should try them, try this or whatever, because it's just, it's probably something that the animal consumed all these things, but just a lot of stuff where people were like, I have felt better. We felt better. Um, and we've realized that with the infrastructure that we currently have in order to maximize what we have, it makes more sense to focus on things that 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 to specialize in a product that um, that's outside of the traditional uh, farm. Yeah. You know, everybody's raising, you know, grass fed beef and, you know, pastured or just pigs in general um and we can't meet the demand so we might as well do something that you know people are asking for and that's healthy snacks um like real true taste good snacks yeah, um, to, to piggyback on that as well i feel like one of the things that we kind of ran into a lot of when it came to the demand part like mm -hmm. was people were like nationwide like california yeah. like i would really love to order your products and it was it was hard because it's like i want to say yes to and we tried it 
and we try, but you know, um, but perishable shipping is absolutely possible. Mm -hmm. It's just, you really do need to have infrastructure in order to do it well and to be able to meet that demand. So, um, so we figured, Hey, like it's time to pivot and like make some smarter choices in the ways that we're moving um, going forward. So we're, we're looking forward to the next year and we're going to be, we're going to be releasing a product and, uh, our first product will be released in January. Uh, so, uh, yep, yeah, that's right now. We're just we're taking care of the animals and we're trying to build production for that. And then in January, we're going to release this um, this product. So, so where can we go to buy this or purchase it? Oh, yeah, it'll be online. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so our website, uh, we have an e-commerce based website. And so we're prior. We were doing like deliveries and buying clubs and all those things. For this next year, we're really focusing heavily on e-commerce. So you actually can order from us, and we can ship it to you nationwide. So that's the beauty of this next phase. It's going to yeah. be for everyone. Wonderful, mm-hmm. perfect. Yeah. All right. So if you're wanting to add sheep, what breed and why? Good question. Uh, yep. So we're gonna go with. Ah, there you go. Exactly. We have uh, Katahdin. That's what. That's what. That, that's the sheep that we want um and specifically because of the um the parrot the because of par- the, the the parasite resistance um because we raise a bunch of animals on our farm um we didn't want something that would potentially cause an issue with our other livestock um because we have cows um we have cows chickens and pigs so um but yeah that's it's been one of those things where um we we were gonna do sheep and then we started doing we started with the jerseys and that kind of we're competing for pasture space um and right now the cows have priority so um so we'll probably start with a few sheep we, we want something small just it was just something that Paige and i not to sell or anything like that it's mostly just for us to consume and then we'll see how it goes from there and if well, you I, know. Mean, I mean i just like the idea of a small room in it mm-hmm. um Cows are big responsibility. I mean, we enjoy the cows, but I kind of sometimes wonder what if we would have gone smaller opposed to bigger? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, would that have been um, better? But I don't know. Yeah. Didn't really do that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Could we safely say grass is your farm's fulcrum? What um, have you learned over the years in development and any particular grass? Oh, okay. Well, I would say we, yeah, if we had oh, to put yeah. it on paper, we were grass farmers. I mean, but I think that's really, if anyone says they're a grass based farmer, they should be growing grass. Like, yeah, yeah. And if they're not, then they probably aren't. <laughs> like, that's kind of a. Yeah, yeah. And, and no specific, yeah, no. And we're not, um, I haven't gotten into uh, specific like grasses or anything like that. Honestly, like in the beginning. We're seeding. But I mean, not- yeah, but. And and that's I'm only the only reason why I was seeding is because honestly, like I'm just trying to grow more grass in places that there were no grass. It's not even a specific. Um, it, it just uh, from a from a time standpoint, it is I need grass and I just need a lot of good grass. It doesn't matter what it is at this point, um, just because we don't. Um, but also because of the state of the property. That yeah, we yeah. Started with. I yeah, think yeah. That's for every area every you know everyone's situation is different um, yeah so and we had mostly wooded areas mm-hmm. and it was tobacco prior so there's a lot of mediation i guess that has to happen um just depending on yeah you know, where you are and what what was happening on the land and you kind of don't know that until you've been doing it for a couple of years yeah i don't know you won't know you won't know the first few years so yeah. i mean the first year you're on the farm if you trying to figure out the grass i mean that's great but well, yeah. You don't know, like, I just need grass. I need good grass that hasn't been sprayed or uh, contaminated with anything. And, and we're rocking with it. Um, and we'll see this year because we will be have been here for almost four years. We will see the difference from when we first got here. We'll do another test and, and we'll just see what we have now uh, opposed to what was here when we first started. But yeah. Yeah, it takes a while to kind of learn the history of your land, especially mm-hmm. if you haven't owned it very long. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So what platform is your website? It is. Oh, it's Shopify. Mm-hmm. Um, we have used Grace Cart before and it's great. Yeah. Um, if you 
but then there's, I mean, there's several platforms that I feel like a lot of people use and have um, really great uh, results with. And I think it really depends on what you're doing. Yeah. Um, like there's another one that a lot of people subscribe to. Oh my goodness, that have CSAs locally. Oh, uh, what is it called? Mm. I'm giving it a plug. But anyway, yeah. there's just there's like there's so many. Um, yeah. But Grace Card is awesome because it's ran by Family Farm. Mm -hmm. I'm not getting I'm not getting paid to say this at all. Yeah. Um, but they um, Seven Sons. They, seven Sons Farm. Yeah, Seven yeah. Sons Farm like started that business, the e-commerce platform. Yeah. Yeah, for training that's what we started with do, yeah we well started the with farm that we bought they yeah. were using it and it just wasn't it was great for it was created for farmers yeah so if, farmers. if you have a csa like if you are doing like produce and, and not saying that meat you can't do meat but if you're doing any type of csas or with produce specifically it is this i mean right. the only reason why we switched to shopify was because of the the platform we were looking for something different like we were looking for something like a subscription base where we're looking for everyday users so um tr we're trying to we were in competition with amazon uh not other farmers so uh that was just our our uh, method wonderful perfect um any other questions from anyone if not we'll we'll be able to wrap this up but Derek Page, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time with us today and uh, and just, yeah, gosh, learning so much. And it yeah. was amazing to see your journey and I can't wait to see the next steps. I mean, snacks are gonna be great. We need them. <laughs> yes, 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 yeah. Perfect. yeah. Well, thank you again, guys, and we'll talk to you soon. All right, thank y'all. Thank you all. Thank everybody. Bye. All right, bye.